Okay, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, please let me know if you're able to see the screen. Uh, are you all able to see my screen, folks? Okay. Okay, then let's get started. So, okay. So before uh, we get, so I would like to welcome everyone to this session on Agile Methodology and uh, Scrum Framework. So before we get started, I'd like to give a small introduction. So um, I'm Nibha. I'm working for Skill Upright as an Agile coach uh, uh, from past couple of years. And previously I have worked with um, IT uh, companies like Mindtree, uh, Cognizant and a couple of others as a scrum master and as, an, as an agile coach. So I have overall about 17 years of experience. Currently I'm working for uh, Skill Up Right. So Skill Up Right is a company, is an IT training company which provides uh, soft skill and IT training uh, to a lot of multinationals like Infosys, Sony, uh, Tata, Alexi, Godrej Infotech and uh, many more. So uh, this is a small and uh, quick introduction about myself. So uh, I, we can go ahead without much delay on the session on Agile Methodology and Scrum Framework. So before I start the topic, I just want uh, to know, like uh, it, I see 502 participants. So I would like to know how many of you are aware of Agile Methodology uh, or Scrum Framework or both? So uh, like, you know, I will get a better idea on like, you know, what kind of audience I'm having here. So if you can just reply as a, if you are aware, please reply as a yes. If you are not aware, please reply as no. Okay, I can see, I can see quite a num few number of yes and there are equal a number of uh, no's as well. Okay. So I think it's a mixed audience uh, who are aware as well as there are people who are not at all aware of the uh, like agile methodology. There are people who are only partially aware or you know they don't know only the basics. So that is good for me because I'll be covering uh, like you know according to uh, this input that I got now. So yeah, so welcome to agile methodology and scrum framework. So here, before I go to the topic, so I can go through the table of contents so that you can get an overview on what we are going to cover today. So the table of contents is what is agile methodology? I'm going to explain you what exactly is the agile methodology. Agile versus waterfall by numbers. So comparing agile and waterfall, like what are the, uh, how agile wins over waterfall and how uh, by numbers we will get to know which uh, methodology is a better one for what kind of projects. Then advantages and disadvantages of agile we will discuss. And then we will move on to the scrum framework. So uh, we, we will discuss on different topics uh, under the scrum framework, like scrum roles, scrum pillars, scrum events, scrum artifacts. And then I will just uh, explain you a few important uh, terminologies that we are using in the Agile or the Scrum framework, okay? So uh, before that, I also would like to tell one more thing uh, that uh, just a ground rule, uh, uh, like let's go ahead with all the topics. I will explain you to the best of my knowledge and my ability. So I will take up all the questions at the end. We will try to finish at, at least 10 to 15 minutes earlier. Uh, and uh, so that, you know, I can get some time and address as, as many questions as possible. So I'll go with the flow now, okay? Uh, keep your questions ready. You can post your questions in the chat channel and I can uh, take a look and reply uh, accordingly, okay? So the first thing, what is Agile? So, uh, yeah, so what is the Agile methodology? So Agile is an approach to software development seeking continuous delivery of working software in iterations. So what does that mean? So that means that, you know, uh, there are uh, within a particular iteration. Iteration is nothing but a period of time. Like it can be a time uh, period of two weeks. It can be a period of one month, but not more than that. So in Agile, a time period to deliver something should not be more than a month. So uh, what, what happens is that every two weeks or one month, whatever you are uh, de uh, deciding on your time period to deliver something, 
we are going to deliver something working to the customer and not wait for an entire year or two to deliver that uh, to the customer. So it is a process where you know continuous delivery and continuous feedback happens. So we deliver something at the end of every iteration and iterations are very small, like a period of two to four weeks. Now let us look at um, this with, an, uh, with uh, this uh, pictorial representation, as well as I will give you a couple of examples which will help you to understand it much better, okay? Uh, I see some, anyone facing any issues uh, on viewing the screen or uh, if you are able to listen or not? Uh, I'm just having a look. It's, it's good, right? So, I, okay, fine. Okay, then I'll continue. So if you look at this uh, uh, models here, okay? So the uh, you might all uh, people, are you aware of the waterfall model? So same way, if you can reply, uh, just for me to get an idea. Are you aware of... Uh, Okay, you're not, uh, people, uh, okay, anyhow, I'm going to explain both. So waterfall model is another uh, model of software development. And these uh, waterfall or agile, it is not only applicable to software development, it can be applicable in your daily life, as well as in the construction of, uh, like, you know, some big, um, uh, what do you say, uh, construction projects in your, uh, like, you know, of the building construction, or when you prepare your food, or when you uh, prepare, or like, you know, anywhere it is applicable. It is not only applicable to software uh, development. Okay, so waterfall model, what it is. So waterfall model, first we collect the requirements, like what is actually needed, what we want to build. So we collect all the requirements. We uh, like, you know, we spend months together on collecting the requirements, understanding the customer needs. And then only when the requirements uh, gathering is completed or when the requirements are, uh, what do you say, the signed off by uh, the customer, only then we will move to the analysis phase. So analysis phase, we will try to analyze what is needed to build that product, okay? So after all the analysis is done, then we move to the design phase, how it should look like, uh, like where, uh, if you're developing, uh, say, a building, uh, how it should look like, basically the architectural part, okay? Analysis will be like, what is needed, uh, what will be the cost? So all these things will be done there. Once that is finalized, only then we will move to the design part. After the design part in software development, uh, if you take the example, we move to the coding. Coding is the actual implementation of whatever you have um, designed and whatever you have envisioned. After coding is done, you will uh, do the testing. So all of the things that you have done within a period of say one year or two years or whatever, will come to testing. After you do all your testing, then it will go to the deployment, which is the acceptance, basically the acceptance by the customer. So here, what happens? It happens in a sequential manner. So only after the completion of one phase, you move to the other phase. You cannot uh, work in parallel or you cannot like, you know, start one phase before the completion of the next phase. So what happens here is you get to see the final product only after a long period of time. So if it is a construction project, it might take two years to construct a, a, a big building or something. So you get to see the end product only at the end. You are not involving people from other phases, like the testing phase or the coding phase in your initial phase. So you, when you are collecting the requirements, these people are not even aware what is happening. Okay, so there is not much collaboration and there is not much transparency here. So uh, you get to see the final product only at the end. And what happens when that happens? you have to give the feedback for the entire thing. And sometimes if the testing people find issues at the end after all this work is done, then there might be a lot of rework or the entire project might have to be discarded. Okay, that is the waterfall model. Now coming to the agile model. So agile is not like that. We, it is a, in very short period of times, like as I said, two weeks or a maximum four weeks, we keep delivering something. So here, each phase work hand in hand. It is like a cycle. You plan, you design, you develop, you test, you release, you get the feedback, you plan again. So all these things happen within a period of two to four, four, uh, four weeks only. So that means the customer is able to get uh, you know, a working piece of software or, or a working, uh, this thing, uh, what do you say, 
uh, a working model or a working product at the end of every two to four weeks. So which makes it much easier for people to um, uh, take the feedback and make changes accordingly. And for this, there will be a lot of collaboration which would be uh, required as well. So that is the difference between the agile and the waterfall model. Now I would like to uh, give you a couple of examples from a real life uh, scenario. Okay, so uh, consider uh, like, you know, first very uh, the daily life uh, thing, which I'm going to give an example. You want to cook something, okay? So you have two options. Uh, you are cooking something in an oven versus you are cooking something on a uh, pan on a stove top. So now when you're cooking something in an oven, okay? So you have to uh, preheat the oven, you have to preset the temperature, you have to preset that option, whether you want to cook uh, like grill or bake or uh, anything else, right? So you have to preset everything. You have to add all your ingredients. You have to prepare, uh, you know, you have to set the baking dish uh, and then you set the timer, you put it in the oven. And only at the end of that um, 50 minutes or one hour, you get to see the final product. So, they, so in between, you are not having much of an option to go and add or remove something because that will spoil the entire thing. So you just, uh, at the end, you get to see the final product, which may or may not be a success, right? So that will that is kind of, it follows a waterfall model. Now you think of cooking on a pan top. So here you have all the option to go ahead and change your taste as per your needs. So you can taste it, you can add more salt or you can add water or you can add your spices. So uh, again, you taste, again, you add, even if it is more, you want it uh, a little more watery, you can add some water. If you want it thick, you can uh, allow it to boil and, uh, you know, bring down the uh, like uh, consistency. So all these things you can do. So based on your experience, based on the immediate feedback that you are getting, you can, uh, you know, uh, make changes to your uh, product. So that, uh, so that is an example of how, you know, cooking can be related to, uh, cooking on a pan top can be related to your agile model and cooking in the oven can be uh, related to your waterfall model. Now I'll give you one more example. Uh, consider a construction of like, you know, I am in Bangalore. So here a lot of Metro construction is going on for different routes. Now you consider a 50 kilometer route, okay? So uh, the people, uh, the engineers or the uh, whoever is at the helm of this project, they want to, uh, that 50 kilometer route, they need five years to develop that uh, route, all the, the metro line in that route. So here what happens is only after the five years, you can utilize the entire route. So if you are building a metro line from point A to say point J, so A, B, C, each being one stop, so there will be 10 stops. And I have to wait for five years to be able to use this metro line. And at the end of five years, if something has, you cannot incorporate anything that you have learned from your mistakes also in between. The entire thing is ready. It will be very difficult to make changes. The entire structure may be affected by that. But um, uh, you and you have to wait. The customer has to wait for five years. So this is like this. For, uh, if you construct in that way, the metro line, it is like it falls under the waterfall model. So only at the end of five years, you will be able to know how your product is looking like. Now, if you do the same thing, like, you know, uh, uh, that is my wish as well, uh, that if the construction is done in a way like from point A to point B, the metro line is fully ready operational. Like you already had a metro line and, you know, it is extending from point A to point B. Now I can at least use it. I can start, if I'm staying in point B, I can already start using it from point B. And if, the, if there's a previous metro line already, so I, I already get the connection. I don't have to wait for five years. Maybe it will take one year to build uh, from one point to the other. So similarly, every one year can be considered as an iteration where from one point to the other, if it is delivered, then at least, you know, people can start using. They don't have to wait for five years to use that line. So that is in terms of construction business, uh, you can say that that falls under agile model if we deliver everything uh, at least from one point to the other every six months or every one year, okay? Now coming to software development, an easy example I can tell you. So uh, uh, like, you know, uh, you want to build a shopping website, like you have your Mintra or Flipkart or Amazon or something, you want to build a shopping website. So this shopping website, what is the very basic minimal requirement? 
you want to search for the product that you want to buy and you want to just pay and get the product delivered, right? This is the very basic minimal requirement from a shopping website. But you have seen there are multiple number of features on your shopping website, so many recommendations. There will be filters, there will be sorting. You can filter based on your, like, you know, size, by the rating, five star rating, based on the brand or the color. So many things are there. But those are good to have, but it's not a must have to deliver the product and to uh, like, you know, start using it. So what we can do. So uh, here, if we follow the, if you want to build the entire website with all the features, it might not be possible in a month, right? You might take one year or even two years to deliver the entire website as, uh, and uh, until then nobody will know, even the customers are not even seeing how it looks like. So after two years, if you deliver it to the customer, the, uh, or even before the customer, when it goes for testing, there might be a lot of defects uncovered, that there might be a lot of deviations from what actually the customer wanted, and you may have to make a lot of changes. So all this feedback will go at the very end of two years, and it will be a huge rework. Right. So this kind of development is like a waterfall model where you want to build the entire thing and give it at one shot, but it may backfire because it might not have been uh, built in the same way at, as it is required. Okay. Now, if you go to the, if you build the same uh, project in an agile model. So in agile, what will happen is in the beginning, in the first iteration, you want to deliver only uh, the uh, functionality where uh, you know uh, 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 you develop only the search feature and you are able to purchase the product. Nothing more, nothing less. This is the in the first one or two iterations you want to deliver only this, so that people can start using it and the owner of the website can already start earning revenue from the, the sales. Okay, but uh, and uh, as in a, a period of say one year or two year every two, two weeks or every four weeks, you can deliver one, one feature to the customer and they can start keeping on using that. For example, in the first iteration, you delivered a shop and uh, like actual purchasing uh, module. In the next uh, two weeks, you, you are going to deliver say, sorting, okay? That too not full of sorting, maybe only one sort, low to high you want to deliver. Uh, in the next uh, next iteration, you want to deliver a filter. So you want to, uh, by star rating, or by brand or something you want to deliver. So every iteration you are delivering something which will work in conjunction with the previous uh, like deliverable, what you have already done or the increment that you have already done in the previous iterations. And together the customer will keep getting a better experience from iteration to iteration. So that way, that module or model of delivering a, a piece of product or a software uh, or a website is called the agile model. So you know the difference. The waterfall model, it takes a long time and uh, to even give up feedback, there, there are no interactions. People are not knowing what is happening. And there's a lot of, and if it doesn't go the way it was planned, then all your effort is gone waste. But in agile model, every two weeks, every four weeks, based on how whatever you plan your iterations duration, you can get to see a working software and you can make adjustments and you can keep adding new, new features in every iteration and people can keep using those features. Okay. Now, how are we going to achieve this agile model? So there are different uh, okay, before that, I want to cover this. So uh, this is by the numbers. So agile and waterfall by numbers. So this is just looking at the failure or the success rates of different size projects when we follow agile or waterfall. So here green is depicting agile, blue is waterfall. So in the case of small projects, you can see that, you know, it is a, a failure rate is 10% for uh, waterfall, whereas it is only 4% for agile. And in medium sized project also, the failure rate for waterfall is higher than in agile. And for large projects, the failure rate of uh, waterfall model is much more than it is uh, the, the failure rate of agile. Okay, Success rate also, so compared to uh, agile, waterfall is like only 26%, 42% is the success rate for agile. Challenges, both are almost equal because there are it, it, the challenges in agile as well, which I will uh, you know let you know. And failure rate is like uh, uh, is much lesser in as agile compared to waterfall model. Okay, so this is by the numbers. So now, uh, like you know, these are already I have discussed with my examples, like what are the advantages. But if you have to just go by points, these are the advantages of agile. 
So superior quality product because you are getting the feedback. You are doing testing only for a. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Okay, yeah, I'm able to hear, right? Okay, fine. So, um, yeah, okay, I got it. So, um, the superior product quality, as I was saying, that you know, it is, uh, you're getting a better quality product because you're getting constant feedback on what uh, work you are, uh, like, you know, you are doing, right? Um, the better control, you have better control because everything is transparent, everything is handy in front of you. So you can better control what you want to change, what you want to incorporate. So everything, and there's a lot of collaboration happening. So you get a better control on your project. Reduce risk. So your costs are less. Not at the end, it is not at the end of two years that you get to know something has not worked. It's a very small change that you might have to do or a very less cost involved. So there is very less risk in agile. So continuous improvement. Based on the feedback that you are getting, so you you will be uh, there will be a continuous improvement on the way you do your work. Then um, the next is more relevant metric. So even if you are collecting some metric like you know uh, the, how much we have delivered, what is the quality of the deliverables? So all these things we can uh, capture uh, more easily because it's a short duration when you are delivering a uh, more number of features. Customer satisfaction, very straightforward. So every two to four weeks, the customers are satisfied that you are uh, delivering something to them. Improve project predictability. So there is a, there's a improved predictability that, okay, if I do it this way, the, the, it is going to work better. Or uh, the previous uh, iteration, this is not, this is something which was, could have been done in a better way. So I can do that. I can improvise on that and I can deliver a better thing. And there will be better predictability basically. Increase flexibility. So constantly you are incorporating feedback and uh, you are delivering in the next iteration. So there's a lot of flexibility. Improve team morale. So people are happy because you are, they are able to deliver something on a constant basis. Customers are also happy. People are also happy. Okay. Then, okay. So there are some disadvantages in Agile as well, okay? So Agile, it does not recommend to have too much of documentation. So in the waterfall model, there is a lot of, in a one-year project, there might be two months dedicated only for creating the documentation and signing it off. But in Agile, we, because work is happening on a constant manner, very, very minimal documentation is actually recommended in Agile. So due to that, what happens? Because of insufficient documentation and clear vision of final product. So as I said, if I go to the shopping website example, so you don't know tomorrow what the customer might come up with. So you don't have the entire thing ready in front of you in the form of some documentation or the entire product vision in front of you, how the final product should look like. Customer may keep want, wanting to add new, new features to that or shopping website. So you don't have a clear vision of the product. And because of insufficient documentation, the customer may uh, tell you to do something today and tomorrow they might come back and say, okay, let us do that later. Let us do this first. So there might be scope creeps to the work that you have already planned. The level of collaboration required may be difficult to maintain. So as you might have already understood by now, there's a lot of collaboration required between the customers and the developers, the testers and the product owners. So I'll come to who are all these people later. So there's a lot of collaboration required. So what happens in that case? A lot of collaboration means you need to reach out to people, you need to facilitate meetings. There may be people might be in different time zones or they might be in there. They might not be available in the time that some people are available. So when a lot of collaboration is needed, so there is always a constraint on all these things and it might be difficult to maintain that kind of a collaboration. Then risk of rework is more due to constantly changing customer needs. So as I said, customer may come up with one thing today, tomorrow they might say, no, no, I don't want it that way, I want it this way. So there might be more rework involved. Projects may get infinite due to ever evolving features. So customer may become greedy because the requirements are not signed off and uh, it's not freezed, right? So customer may just come back and say, oh, this is looking so great. Can we have one more feature like this, which will even enhance the user experience? So, you know, projects may go on and on like this without a, a final uh, conclusion date. But in waterfall, that may not happen because you might have already freezed the requirements and you are not going to take in any new requirements until you would have delivered this first piece of work, right? So for complex projects, 
the resource requirement and effort are difficult to estimate. So uh, because the customer may come up with new, new requirements every time, you may not exactly get to know like when we are going to complete this project. The management may want to deploy the resources to a different project, but may, they may not be able to because the, we don't know like, you know, how long the customer is keep on going to add the, you know, new new features. So uh, in that case, the organization may not be able to take a proper decision on when the resources can be moved to other projects or what may be the cost involved and all that, right? So these are few of the disadvantages. Now moving on to what is Scrum. So uh, many of you might uh, have heard of Scrum, you might have heard of Agile, you might have heard of Scrum. Many people think that, you know, Scrum and Agile are the same. Actually, it is not the same. So Scrum, uh, uh, Agile is a set of principles, a way of doing the work. It has a, a, some values and principles. It is a way of doing work where you deliver working piece of software on a continuous manner, right? But what is Scrum? Scrum is a way of achieving Agile. There are different frameworks or you can call it like a tool, okay? So uh, uh, Scrum is just one tool or a framework to achieve Agile. So there are different frameworks under Agile. Agile is one big umbrella. There are many different ways of achieving as Agile and Scrum is one. Similarly, there is Kanban, there is Scrumban, there is Lean, Less. Now there is um, Safe, which is becoming very popular. So there are different ways of achieving Agile. And Scrum is the most widely used and the most popular among them. So that is why in this session, we are going to cover Scrum, okay? So what is Scrum? Scrum is a framework to build software product by following agile principles, so, uh, as I already said. So Scrum employs an iterative and incremental approach to optimize predictability and control risk. So it is nothing but similar to what I said for agile, that every iteration you are going to deliver something inc an increment to the customer. So that way you, you, we can increase the predictability and also control the risk, okay? And fundamental unit of Scrum is the Scrum team. So now we are coming to how we are going to use Scrum to be agile and to deliver software in a, a software or any product in an iterative manner. So this fundamental unit, the who is going to work on this Scrum model, it is a Scrum team. Does a Scrum team consist of a Scrum master, product owner, and the developers? When you say developers, it is not the developers who are actually coding. It includes developers as well as testers. So basically it is a Scrum team. Okay. Scrum has three pillars, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. I will explain all of this in detail. Scrum has four formal events within a containing event, which is called a sprint, which will implement the Scrum pillars. So all these things I will explain you in detail, and you will have a very clear picture on what it is. Okay, let's go move on to the next slide. So th this is the Scrum team, so which uh, and the different roles in Scrum, basically. So in Scrum team, so this Scrum team is the one which is going to work, use the Scrum framework to uh, deliver increments in an agile model, okay? So the Scrum team is, a, it, it's a team. There is no hierarchy in the Scrum team. All team members are considered as equal. So there is no lead, there is no manager, all team members are equal, whether it is a product owner, the Scrum master, or the development team members all are equal, okay? But they have different responsibilities. Each of these uh, roles have different responsibilities. So what is a product owner? The product owner is the one who are going to talk to the customers, take the requirements, and they are going to let the team know that this is what the customer wants and what is the benefit that they are going to get. Okay, so they, in an organization, the product owners will come up with how they want to enhance their product or what new things can be added to that company's uh, you know, products so that uh, you know, we can get in more customers. So product on, owner will come up with what is desired and what is the value, why it is desired. Okay, the scrum master, it will be the keeper of the scrum process. So all this agile related stuff, the scrum master will be the servant leader for the team who will help the team to follow the process, will interact, will help with the collaboration, will interact with the product owner, will interact with the team and will help to set the, uh, help everyone to adhere to the process and to deliver the most optimal and quality product, okay? Then the scrum team members. So the scrum team members are the ones who are actually going to work on building the product, 
okay and they and how long it will take uh, like what are the different uh, they, they, they they will have all the technical people testers developers uh, to deliver the product to work on the product and to deliver the product okay these three roles comprise the scrum team so the next one is scrum pillars so these are the pillars of scrum i have been saying from a long time that you know agile is a collaborative uh, it, it's a, it's more there's a lot of collaboration required there's a lot of transparency because we every two to four weeks we are getting to see what is being built so there is a lot of transparency and everyone knows the scrum team as well as the stakeholders the customers everyone knows what is going on okay so that is why a transparency is a major pillar of scrum next one is inspection so everybody is seeing what is the work that we are uh, doing it. As we move ahead, we know what is the work that is needed. What is the work we are doing? Are there any deviations? Are we meeting whatever the product owner has uh, envisioned to, to build a product? So every day we can actually uh, check on the work that we are doing. We can inspect the work we are doing. How? We will come to that. So an adaptation. So if we see that, okay, you know, we are, if we are, something is not going right and we need to make adjustments very quickly in that cycle of uh, two weeks or four weeks, we can make adjustments to, you know, uh, adapt to that, or we can make adjustments to meet that, uh, uh, whatever the product, product owner has envisioned. So it's, uh, Scrum is transparent. We have the option to inspect our work on a regular basis, and then we can adapt if something is not going as per plan at the earliest. We don't have to wait for one year or two years to adapt to the changes. We can do that every two or four weeks. Okay, so that is adaptation. Now we are coming to the scrum events or the ceremonies. So the scrum events through, or it is called the scrum ceremonies. So these are the events through which we will be able to do the work, okay, and deliver product in a particular iteration. Now, there are four events in Scrum within a containing event called Sprint. So this, all this time I have been talking about iteration, iteration. So the Sprint is nothing but the iteration in Scrum. So this iteration or the Sprint can be a two weeks or a four weeks duration. It can be one week or it can be three weeks also, but ideally uh, people choose a two week or a four week uh, Sprint, okay. So this sprint is nothing but it's a time boxed event. It's for, it can it can be from a Monday to then uh, two weeks uh, later Monday. So it is a time boxed event wherein all the activities will take place to work on your product and deliver it at the end of the two or four weeks. Okay. So what are the events within that sprint? Uh, that different events within that sprint or the scrum ceremonies that we do for us to work on that product. So we will be having a sprint planning daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. So these four events along with the sprint combined is called the scrum events or the scrum ceremonies, okay? Now I will take you through what each one of these is used for or what each one of them are uh, actually. So the sprint, for the sprint, as I said, it's a fixed length event, usually of two to four weeks decided by the product owner and the team. So in a sprint, we, we plan for some amount of work and we make it ready for a review or ready for the customer to review at the end of the two or four weeks. So a new sprint starts immediately after conclusion of the previous sprint. So for example, if we, we are considering a two week sprint, so we consider all the holidays and weekends, everything within that sprint only. It is just that when we plan for the sprint, we will just consider if people are on vacation, if there are any holidays. So based on that, we will plan for our work. If there are too many holidays, say during the new year time or during the Diwali time, okay? So we will plan for less work, but still we are going to deliver something at the end of two or four weeks. If, if the entire team is present, then we take work accordingly. But the sprint always starts on, uh, the, uh, uh, like one new sprint starts as soon as the previous sprint is ended. And uh, it is ideal to always maintain the same length of the sprint as same, uh, like for any scrum team, okay? So we, a sprint can be from a Monday to a two weeks later Monday. So 14 days, we will exclude the leaves and also 10, num 10 is the number of working days. The moment we start and uh, end the previous sprint, we will start with the new sprint and we will plan a new set of work items, okay? A sprint could be canceled if the sprint goal becomes obsolete. Suppose we uh, plan something for the sprint we want to deliver, say going back to that shopping website example, suppose in a sprint we want to uh, work on a particular, you know, sort feature suppose, okay. 
suddenly the customer says that I don't want sort featured at all in my project. Not only later, I don't want it at all. So then the sprint itself, whatever we plan might become uh, uh, like, you know, uh, it may become obsolete and we might have to discard the work. It happens very, very, very rarely. But even if that happens, the product owner uh, will be canceling the sprint and we will start with a new sprint. Okay. So the next one. The first thing that we will do in the sprint is the sprint planning. On the day of the new sprint, the, 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 on the start of the new sprint, the first thing that we do will be the sprint planning. So very straightforward, you can understand from the name itself. In the sprint planning, that is a time box, that's an event that happens, that's a meeting basically. That is where we plan what we want to do in, in that two weeks or four weeks of iteration. So it is not that what the team wants to work on exactly, so the product owner would have the uh, all the requirements, right? He would have, have kept the requirements ready. Like these are first, we have to develop that uh, search and shop feature. Next, we have to develop the uh, sort feature. Then we have to first uh, incorporate the star filter, then maybe the brand filter. So product owner will have a list of requirements, which are called the user stories. So each feature will be like a user story. So now, uh, in the sprint planning, based on the available uh, capacity of the team, the team will decide how much of the work can be taken up in this, that two weeks or three, four weeks iteration cycle and they can, how much they can deliver. So after discussion with the product owner, um, what adds maximum value based on that, the team will um, decide on how much work they can plan in that sprint and they can uh, like, you know, deliver within that sprint. So that is where uh, in the sprint planning meeting, they will decide, okay? So it will be list of user stories. I'll just briefly tell you what is user story at the end. So each feature which basically can be a user story, which can be broken down into development task by the development team and they can decide how much they want to deliver in the um, uh, within that particular sprint or the iteration okay so entire scrum team is involved in the sprint planning so the product owner scrum master and the tier and developers testers everybody will be involved in the sprint planning the whole scrum team collaborates to define a sprint goal based on the product owners this directions on value creation so as i said what we want exactly deliver in the sprint, the main uh, objective of the sprint, what, uh, do we want to deliver only the search and book feature in the sprint. Then uh, based on that, we will pick the user stories and break them down for uh, the different developers to work on. But ultimate goal of the sprint is going to be that only. We are going to use those work items to achieve that sprint goal. Okay, so that is what we are going to call the sprint goal. Then with the help of the product owner, Developers select items to work on in current sprint from the product backlog. Like, as I said, developers will, so you cannot just pick whatever you like. So what adds maximum value in that sprint based on the customer needs, the product owner will tell us, and we can pick up the items accordingly. So sprint planning meeting can be time boxed to uh, eight uh, hours for a four week sprint. For shorter sprints, the meeting can be shorter. So you can take up to, you can utilize up to eight hours. If you are deciding on four week sprint, then you can take up to eight hours to plan for your sprint. Okay, usually all companies, it is like one or two hours only we will be dedicating for the planning, but there is no harm in even spending eight hours to plan for all the work. If you want to do a very precise planning, so you can up, use up to eight hours for a four week sprint. Okay, hope everyone is understanding. You can just reply in a yes or a no, at least for me to get some idea. Okay. Okay, I can see most yes only. So I hope, yeah, it is going good. I will believe that. Thank you for those who have answered. Okay. Okay. So now sprint planning. Uh, so sprint planning, we are done, right? Okay, we'll go to the next. Okay. Daily scrum. So daily scrum, as the name says, daily. Okay. So this is a meeting. It's a, just a 15 minute meeting that is uh, that should be organized in all of the days in the sprint where the team gets an opportunity to discuss what they are working on, if they are blocked in any way, what they worked on yesterday, what they will work on today, and if there are any imp impediments or if there are any 
blockers. Okay, so this helps the team to stay relevant to the sprint goal to understand what is a go, uh, like you know if uh, people can help others or if anybody is blocked or stuck in something then you know developers testers they can help product owner can help if any requirement is not understood but it, this is where you know it aligns with that regular collaboration thing so uh, during the daily scrum you collaborate with your team members uh, on a regular basis to discuss on how you are progressing with the work and if you are facing any blockers so it is a 15 minute meeting and it is ideal to be held at the same time and same place every day to reduce complexity. What does that mean? So same time and same place, uh, why we say that is because we don't have to remember. If the daily scrum is at 10 a.m. every day, people don't have to look at the calendars and waste their time saying that, okay, today the daily scrum is at 10 o'clock, tomorrow it is at 10.30, day after tomorrow it is at 12 p.m. Okay. So it is an event recommended to be kept at the same time every day so that people can just blindly walk into a room and they can discuss on uh, what they are, how, how it is going, what work they are doing, and whether we are deviating from the sprint goal. Okay, so th that is the daily scrum, which and, uh, helps in a lot of collaboration between the team members and make adjustments if something is uh, deviating from what was planned. The next one is the sprint review meeting. So the sprint review meeting happens at the end of the sprint. So this is the opportunity for the development team or the scrum team to showcase whatever they have de uh, built during that iteration or sprint. So here, as I said, like, you know, every two weeks or four weeks, you have some working software. So this is your opportunity to showcase to uh, the, all the stakeholders before it goes to the market to be used by the public, your organization, your managers, your customers, developers, scrum master, product owner, and any other stakeholders who are interested in this, will get. We, 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 it is just a meeting where we invite all these people to have a look at what we have developed every two weeks or four weeks. Okay. So it should be a working session where team demos the actual work done. So it should not be like, uh, you know, just doing a presentation. They should be able to see the actual software. If it is a construction, they should get to see the actual construction, actual building being built. It's not like you just bring a picture and you just show them. It should be the actual building that is being built. If it is in case of software, um, whatever you have done, tested, you have developed, it, we, we have to show that. Uh, it should be the working piece of software. Then based on the inputs from this meeting, team can decide what, what to do next or if any adjustments need to be made in the product backlog. So there are so many people involved in this review meeting, right? So there may be a lot of, uh, what do you say, a uh, lot of inputs or feedback that may come in. So this is a good opportunity where people will discuss on any feedbacks and the product owner will make notes and they will the product owner will add all this feedback to the product backlog, which can be worked upon in upcoming iterations. Okay, so we can adjust according to the customer feed. So the meeting can be four hours long for a four week sprint. So again, this meeting can be, uh, if it is a four week sprint, we can utilize up to four hours to demo uh, all our work in that uh, last, in that iteration. Okay, so that is the sprint review meeting. So the next is the sprint retrospective, the uh, other scrum event, which is the sprint retrospective, very important one. So this also happens at the end of the sprint. So here, what happens? The team will discuss uh, what went well and what did not go well within that sprint, okay? So it is not only with respect to what you developed and what you tested, not only the technical things. Here, you can discuss what are the external factors also that have in, uh, you know influenced your work? Like something like, you know, did you get enough support to uh, when you were blocked? Did you get the support from product owner, from your team members, from your management? Did you, uh, you know, get, get the right environment uh, to uh, do your work? So everything can be considered and you can just look upon what went well and what did not go go well in the sprint and how you can improve in the upcoming sprints um, on, uh, on those lines. So mm, you will have some action items out of the retrospective, which can be incorporated in the upcoming sprint as part of the sprint backlog. If it is something to do with the external environment and all, then you can talk to, you know, say your uh, system admin, or you can talk to your manager if something made you upset. It can be a personal matter also, which was you asked for leave, you did not get. Okay, so that has upset you. Okay, that also can come up in the retrospective, saying that if I would have got the leave and refreshed myself, I could have worked better. You can bring that up. 
So that will be an action item with your manager that you know, okay, you know, so and so requested for a leave. It will be good if you like you can approve that leave so that you know so and so can work better. That has affected his or her work. So all these things can be discussed in the retrospective. Our ultimate goal is that we have the action items or we get something out of the retrospective, which helps us to improve in the upcoming uh, iterations or sprint. Okay. So this meeting can also be a maximum of three hours for a four week sprint. So if it is a four week sprint, it can be a three hour meeting. If it is a two week sprint, you can you, like, you know, one hour, two hour, whatever you uh, feel like. Okay. So this is the sprint retrospective. So with this, uh, like I just want to summarize what are the scrum events are. If I go back to my, uh, okay. Uh, okay, how do I go back? Okay, so uh, I was telling you about the different scrum events. So scrum events, it is uh, if the iteration is called a sprint. Within that sprint, we are doing a sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective to Together, call it an increment. And at the end of all this, what we give to the customer is an increment. And again, we start with the sprint planning, again, the daily scrum review retrospective. So this goes on in a cyclic manner from sprint on sprint, okay, in Agile. So now uh, moving on to uh, like, this is just a, whatever I explained so far. So this is the scrum framework in a nutshell, in a pictorial representation. So here you can see, this is the product backlog. The product will keep adding new requirements uh, about, say, as I said, search and book. Then he will add uh, sorting. Then he will add recommendations, Google Analytics. Then he will add filters. So all these things, are the, the different modes of payment. So the customer product owner will keep adding to the product backlog. Okay, we once in a while, we keep looking at this product backlog. There is also one event called the sprint grooming where we can uh, you know, look at the items in the product backlog and we can discuss with the product owner. So anytime during the sprint, we can set up these grooming meetings. You can also go to the product owner one-on-one -on -one just to see what lies in the backlog, just to keep ourselves ready for the uh, next sprint, okay? So uh, from this product backlog, we do the sprint planning. As I said, like uh, we pick up what we want to work on in that particular sprint, which forms the sprint backlog. Then from the sprint backlog, this is the scrum team will work on the sprint backlog for a duration of that two to four weeks with the daily scrum happening uh, on a, a daily basis. And at the end of the sprint, we will deliver an increment of that working software. Then that increment will be reviewed during the sprint review meeting. And then we will be having a retrospective and whatever is the feedback from the retrospective or from the review, again, we'll go back to the product backlog and then to the sprint backlog, which will be again taken up in the subsequent uh, sprints or iterations. Okay, so this is a Scrum framework in a nutshell. Now, last uh, topic that I have here is Scrum artifacts. Okay, what is an art artifact? So it is just an object. Okay, artifacts are objects. So what is an object here in Scrum? So we discussed so many things now. We discussed about the sprint backlog, then the product will have uh, the, this product backlog, and then we will deliver an increment. So all these things together comprise of the uh, Scrum artifacts. Artifacts are nothing, but it is the set of information. So product backlog is a set of information. Sprint backlog is a set of information. Increment is a set of information. Okay, so this helps us to understand what we are working on, what we are going to work, and what is that we are going to release to the customer. So it is just a set of objects, different objects, which we call the Scrum artifacts. Okay, so these are with related to Scrum that I wanted to cover in today's session. But nonetheless, I wanted to uh, just uh, bring to your notice a few important terminologies which we keep using and I have also used here a couple of times. So a user story. User story is nothing but a feature or a module in the software. Like as I said, that filter or the sort or uh, the booking or addition of different payment options. So all these are, each one will be like a user story which the product owner will develop and keep adding to the product backlog. Epic, Epic is a collection of user stories. So that is completely up to the product owner and the team, how you want to categorize your work. Uh, it is, say for example, you want to uh, have different kinds of filters for your shopping website, star rating, brand uh, brands, then uh, you know uh, uh, the colors, then uh, uh, range, uh, like you know you want to purchase between uh, 100 to uh, 1000 rupees. So uh, everything is a filter, right? So 
each filter uh, to implement each filter can it uh, there can be different user stories for each of them which can be combined together into an epic so uh, all these things epic or user stories if you are using jira or rally or any other project management tool you have very uh, clear cut options to create an epic and user story so those are the tools which will enable you to create epic and user story um, or task or bug or anything. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, Epic will be a collection of the user stories. And product backlog will contain all the user stories that you have to uh, you know, deliver sprint on sprint. Then the sprint and the iteration, which I already spoke about, it is the period of time, a fixed period of time, where you are going to deliver working increment. Okay. Last but not the least, story point. Many people of you would have already heard about story point estimation. Okay, so this is the most commonly used estimation technique in a scrum and or agile environment. So it's a relative estimation technique. So uh, for um, the story points, we usually, usually uh, use the Fibonacci series. So which is like 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. So what is the relative estimation? See, when we work on a particular user story, rather than estimating by number of hours or number of days, okay, it is ideal to estimate using relative estimation. The reason being, say, say for I am a developer, suppose, I want to implement a user story. I might take five days of time, okay, but there may be another developer who is an expert in that, uh, is a technically expert, and that person can implement the same thing in two days, okay. So then we will not be able to give the proper estimation because different kinds of people will be there in the team and everybody might have a different number of days or number of hours to work on a, a particular uh, feature. But if we estimate by a story point, a relative estimation, then we are just weighing that particular uh, user story. Okay, so how, what is the weight of that user story? Not how much you are time you are going to take, okay? So for example, you are having a set of like 10 work items, 10 user stories, okay? How we do this story point estimation is, we pick the smallest one with the product owner's guidance, we will get to know, okay, which is the smallest one. Say the smallest one, you are going to estimate it as a one or a two, okay? Then you take the next user story. Now you can compare, compare to that smallest one that you had in the previously estimated to be a one or a two, how big is this one? Is it just little bigger than this? Is it much bigger than this? Or is it somewhere in between? So based on that, you can assign the story points to those uh, user stories in a relative fashion. So if the first one was a two and the second one is double the effort or double uh, bigger than the first one, then you, you don't see four here, right? So you will directly go for the next bigger one, which is five. Now the third story, if it is like three times of that, okay? You don't see a 10, you, uh, five, into, 5 into 3, you don't see a 15 here. So what is the nearest? 13 is the nearest or 21, okay? So 15 is somewhere in between or 13 and 21. So as a team, you need to discuss whether you want to settle with 13 or you want to go with 21. But there's a catch here. 13 and 21, if you go for, that means most probably it will it cannot be completed within a single iteration and the work will be carried over to the next iteration, okay? So ideally, uh, what is recommended is if it, a story is estimated to be eight or more, then it is good to break down that user story into smaller word items, which can be delivered within a single sprint. So this is the essence of story point estimation, okay? So I, with this, I think I have covered all the topics that I intended to cover today. So I am open to Q&A. Uh, so what is the, okay, uh, we started a bit late. Maybe we can spend some five to 10 minutes answering to a few questions. So hope uh, everyone has uh, understood and uh, like, you know, you, you are okay with the session. Um, so, uh, Okay, let me look at the questions. Yeah, so recording a few people I have asked. Yeah, I, will, I'll, I, I think the recording will be shared. Okay, so uh, yeah, are there any questions? Mm. Oh yeah, who all should join retrospective? Okay, so retrospective should be joined by the Scrum Master, Product Owner, and the team. Basically, the Scrum team should join the retrospective. Okay, 
So whose responsibility to create a user story, product owner or dev? So here the product owner or the product owner is accountable, but dev also can create the user stories and get it signed off from the product owner. Okay. Uh, we talk about user story and task, but what about epic? When should we use epic over user story? So there, I, I think I already covered that. So epic is a collection of user stories. So you, epic is not something that you pull into the sprint to work on. It is a collection of user stories. It is just like a placeholder. So when you are, uh, people can go and look at the epic, look at all the user stories that are linked to that epic and get a clear picture on how much of the work is done and how much is not done. Okay. What is refinement? So refinement, like as I was talking, telling grooming. So the, you can spend time, you can have a formal meeting also within the two weeks or four weeks iteration. Uh, 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 means every sprint you can spend about one or two hours looking at the backlog pro items which have been newly added by the product. You can go through those to understand and you can keep asking your questions to your product so that we are ready for the uh, next sprint and we have many of our questions answered. So that is called the sprint refinement session. Okay. Uh, so is there any time-based story pointing approach? So as I said, we use this story point estimation we can also use t-shirt sizing there also it is like small like excess small medium large uh, and uh, otherwise you can go with direct uh, hours or, or number of days also but uh, the, uh, i already explained what is the disadvantage of that you know that different people may have different uh, skill levels and the estimations may not be correct one person can complete it in one day another person may take 5 days to complete so that that is why we go for story point estimation Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this one. In agile method methodology, where is requirement phase? So there is, like as I said, requirement. It's a continuous process. So pro the requirements will keep getting added to the product backlog. We refine that. We keep, uh, then uh, every two weeks or four weeks, we will uh, look at the requirements. We will uh, plan for uh, the uh, what we want to deliver in the sprint, and we keep. So there is no requirement phase separately. It is a continuous process, as I already explained. So um, support, uh, will this method work for who supports backend production daily activities like DBAs or infra people? So this, uh, I think for this, the Kanban model will work because Scrum is a time box uh, unit where, you know, iteration, uh, every iteration we are delivering at the end of uh, the iteration. But in Kanban is another agile framework. So that's a totally different topic, but just to give you a heads up, uh, like, you take up a new uh, uh, task once you complete the previous task. So it is not time box like a sprint, but it is still agile because you are daily, you know, if you are working on a task and you complete that task, you can still pick up the next task and you uh, that also goes in a continuous fashion. And that is also a collaborative manner. So for this question with respect to DBA, uh, backend production daily activities, Kanban would be the more suitable model. Okay, how to conduct... Okay, how to conduct retrospectives effectively? Is there free tools? Yeah, there are many free tools uh, I think you can find online. So effectively means, you know, you have to have more, I think face-to-face -face retrospectives work better than from my experience, better than uh, like virtual ones. And, uh, you know, you can use many icebreaker sessions. You can, uh, you, you know, you can use breakouts where you can ask the teams to discuss and, uh, you know, there are many retrospective templates. Actually, I myself have Googled a lot and you can find that there are many ways that you can, you can do polling in different ways. If people are reluctant to speak up, you can do polling and you can find out how the, your questions should be framed in such a way so that, you know, that you get the right answers from that poll. So instead of people going and writing like, you know, what went well, what did not go well, you can do a poll based on certain questions. So you can get to at least know uh, what people are feeling about it. Okay. Uh, what is the role of a project manager in a scrum team? There is no project manager in a scrum team. So the scrum team, as I said, product owner, scrum master, and team members. Project manager in your organization should be actually kept out of the scrum team. Uh, that, that it is the, uh, what you said, responsibility of the scrum master to explain that to the project manager. They should be more focused on, like, you know, um the what do you say the forecasting and resourcing and all those things so the scrum team basically should be a self-managed team who should be able to uh, discuss together and pick up their own work and deliver their own work okay uh, uh okay uh, what is it okay 
sprint, sprint review retrospective I already explained. I think yeah, another two minutes I have. So, and we have more than one sprint running at the same time. No, we cannot have more than one sprint. So it can be in different, uh, like, you know, within us, uh, you can, a scrum master can have multiple scrum teams, uh, handling multiple scrum teams, but we can have only one sprint running at a, a time. Uh, that will be the ideal one. I don't think that we can have more than one sprint running at a time for one team, okay? Mm. Is Scrum Master same as the project manager? No, Scrum Master is a servant leader. Project manager is actually not there in Agile or in especially in Scrum. So that the, the mainly service-based organizations will have the project manager, but they are more to do with the overall delivery and resourcing and allocation and all those things, as I said. Scrum Master is a, is a, is a servant leader for the team who will help the team in all possible ways to get the work done smoothly. Um, the, uh, so how we can track the burn down chart uh, that burn down chart and burn up chart are like totally different topics it will take uh, I, I mean I cannot ex explain so it's like a chart where you know you are just uh, burn down chart is how much work is left in the sprint so you plot that against story point by time so uh, by, uh, 10 days in a sprint if we have every sprint uh, like every day how much of the work has been achieved so that it will show in uh, the burn down chart and burn up chart is how much uh, okay uh, yeah it's just the opposite of the burn down chart i'm not uh, able to recollect quickly so demo example fibonacci fibonacci is nothing but you just it's like as i already explained one one two three five so uh Product owner is a stakeholder. His product owner belongs to the uh, Scrum team. He is uh, very much a part of the Scrum team who together along with the development team and the Scrum master are going to deliver the product. They are, see, why I, I understood why this question has come up because there are product-based companies and who are hiring service-based companies to uh, like, you know, the outsourcing the work to the service-based companies, in which case the product owner will be from the client organization. But actually together the product owner, at that time the product owner might seem as a client, but actually the product owner is very much a part of the team and they together have to deliver the working software for external customers. Okay, but that client and service-based company, product-based, that is always there, but the product owner is not, like if you consider it that way, they are a client, but otherwise they are part of the team. Okay, so I think we have run out of time. I cannot take any more, uh, but one important one I see, what is velocity? So velocity is nothing but what, uh, how much work we have completed within a sprint. So these story points, right? So if uh, we will be estimating all the stories, right? So uh, say two, three, five, whatever we are estimating. So uh, we we'll say in a sprint, we are able to do 25 story points, okay? So that 25 will be the velocity for that sprint. So like the sprint on sprint set to this sprint, we have delivered 25 story points. Next sprint, we are delivering 30 story points. Another sprint, we are delivering only 20 story points. So on, in the fourth sprint, when we predict like how much work we can take it, we will take the average of these last three sprints and we, that will help us to identify actually how much work we are able to deliver. And like that, we just take the average of three or five sprints and that much work we take in. Apart from the leave plans and the vacations, this is a measure of how much work we can take in, how much work can be completed in a sprint. So that's all the time I have, I think. Uh, so yeah. I think uh, we are good to wrap up the session. So thank you everyone for joining. I think the recording will be shared. And if there are any questions, maybe you know you can uh, like reach out uh, and we'll try our best to answer. And uh, you can also like, there's a lot of information available on Google. So you can uh, like now, I hope you have got a like you know, good understanding. You can go back and you can relate and you can find out. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a good day ahead.